Number one, we will go into the most popular case that we're covering right now. It is the Idaho 4 case. Now, for all of you listening, we read through these motions on this video here on the True Crime Talk Show live. So if you want to hear the walkthrough of every one of these, check out that video. Um, I just want to be able to update our podcast viewers because we have we get the majority of our views from the podcast on the international front. Um, it's literally like 10 times the amount of views what we see on YouTube in, in the international, like on the podcast platforms and everything. Um, so we wanted to be able to up you, update you guys too. So on 3... 12 of 24 is really when these started coming through. We have the motion to file Exhibit K attached to the defendant's 12th supplemental request for discovery under seal. On the 12th, we have the motion to seal Exhibit A attached to the defendant's fourth motion to compel. Again on the 12th, defendant's fourth motion to compel discovery. And again on the 12th, defendant's 12th, 12th supplemental request for discovery on the 13th we have order to file defendants exhibit k attached to the defendants 12th supplemental request for discovery under seal and then the newest on the 13th we have order sealing exhibit a attached to the defendants fourth motion to compel now it's always exciting seeing like updates coming out in this case uh, because we're all sitting behind screens hoping they're going to release information, I feel like. Yeah, and they never do because it's so sealed up. So as you as you can hear, like there's two really um, motions to get discovery from the state. But the exhibits detailing exactly what those pieces of discovery are, are sealed. Um, and from what we counted, there are 14 total pieces of discovery that have been previously requested in supplemental requests for discovery or motions to compel discovery um, from January of this year. And I think it was November of last year. Um, 14 total that they still haven't gotten. Yep. Yep. Super and, curious what those are. But what's interesting is in this 12th su supplemental request, it states, like you just said, that they've requested them before. So then the bigger question comes to the forefront of why haven't they got these? At least that's the biggest question for me. It's not what, what it is. But for me, it's why haven't they got these things? If they know and they can confirm, hey, we're asking for these specific things that you guys have told us that you have, why don't we have them? Yeah, because from the, November and January, the defense can't know something exists unless there's either proof of it existing, the state has admitted it exists. Or there's like enough reason for them to believe because of other pieces of discovery that this should exist, you know, um, yeah. which meaning most likely that it does usually. I Exactly. I agree. And I think that's a, a very interesting question, especially with a lot of the questions that the, the true crime community has been posing uh, online about. You know, why hasn't the prosecution given this over? It's been a whole year. Is the defense dragging their heels? Is the prosecution dragging their heels? Like, there's so many questions, concerns um, about the discovery and the fact that the defense can't get it uh, that, you know, it, it's interesting to see that in the court, it's reflecting basically the same concerns that people uh, are bringing, bringing up. Yeah, it feels like the prosecution is playing a game with the discovery. Um, you know, Ann Taylor in the last couple hearings, she was really, really nice um, and understanding with Bill Thompson, the prosecutor. Uh, like, oh, I know it's not his fault. You know, he's having to request it from all these other jurisdictions and agencies. And there's just so many. And I'm, 
you know, I'm sure he's trying his best, but I feel like, I, I don't know why I feel like she doesn't really believe that I, because I don't really believe that. Um, I think there's a game going on here with the discovery. Yeah, there's a game going on. And is it justice? Is it fair? Is it okay? Should we accept this game in our judicial system that we owe? I think that's my biggest question there because, uh, you know, as, as I'm looking at this, I'm wondering it when I'm connecting it to the recent hearing, you heard Ann Taylor say that hey, we're looking for this video, which she wasn't talking about, but got brought up because Judge Judge thought she was referencing a car when she wasn't. But she says, uh, you know, we, we don't have this video that we know of the state is leaning their case on as evidence. So a major piece of evidence is being used in this discovery to convict Brian Koberger, and that evidence hasn't even been shared. It's not like, the defense is, is like, hey, I need that discovery that talked about, you know, what that one person's aunt's neighbor's friend's favorite food is. Like, this is discovery and evidence that's being used in the case to convict. Yeah. It, it's just interesting. It's just interesting because it goes against everything that I've heard a lot of people out there that believe Brian Koberger's guilty are arguing. Yeah. I mean, the opposite, the argument towards Brian Cover being guilty is that the PCA is very like thorough and it, it basically shows that there's a ton of evidence against him. Um, and there's going to be more to come to back up what's in the PCA. Um, and that the prosecution is confident in their case, very confident and was ready at the spe speedy trial date. Um, and it would have been ready for the 2024 trial date mm. yet. They still have not given over all the discoveries. So, and they don't have the cast report. And according to everything we heard, the cast report, as well as the DNA is, is literally what's going to sink him. Like yeah. that is the biggest pieces of evidence against him, um, other than video. But I mean, even the video is being called into question at this point, because we're talking about video that is chopped up and the sound is disconnected from the picture. Yeah. That doesn't sound like great evidence. No, it sure doesn't sound like great evidence to me at least. And uh, so I received a little off topic. I received uh, an email yesterday of somebody who was like, it, it could totally be a troll, and I get that, but I want to share it because it's interesting. Uh, if it's true, it's interesting. But this person was saying, um, hey, you know, I, I'm not held to this gag order, but I want to share this information with you. What you guys are seeing happening in the case and uh, it in the court is that all, all these local agencies and the FBI have very solid evidence that Brian Koberger was a dangerous person before the crime and why the prosecution is holding out and doing these things is because they're worried about getting public fault because they could have prevented this from happening, which is an interesting idea. When I read that, I was like, hmm. OK, and of course, I, you know, I'm looking for objective evidence of this because otherwise it's just a story. Right. Um, but uh, but I was like, none. wow, that's interesting. Uh, is that possible? You know? Yeah, I I feel like it could. OK, so the first time I really started hearing about Brian Koberger being on the radar pre crime was with the recent leaked Steve text. That's now I would love to hear in any comments or anything you guys leave, email, whatever, if you heard of it any sooner than that. Um, the leak text is the first time I heard anybody saying anywhere on the internet that Brian Koberger was being monitored in Pennsylvania way before this crime. Yeah. And it's interesting we're getting an email essentially saying that, but it's an interesting theory. 
that he could have been flagged somehow. He could have been seen as dangerous and they were watching him and could have stopped him from committing the crime, but didn't. But didn't, yeah. And yeah, that could... And that would be a bad look, too. That would be a very that, bad look. On law enforcement. And and with the Oh, can you imagine what the, the Gonzalez family would do oof. if they found that out? Remember, the Gonzalez's have a lawsuit open right Dude, now. The Gonzalez against... family would lose their minds I hear you. like they I know. would literally fight to the death for justice like yep. i don't doubt that for a second yep yep but we're curious what you guys think we just wanted to update you on uh the newest orders that came out or um uh documents that came out and like i said if you guys want to hear them being read through you can find it here um, but there's no real juicy information in them. I just want to give you the heads up. There's no real juicy information. They are all documents that we've heard before with other requests for discovery. It's just a continuation of that. Yeah, so. we pretty much gave you the rundown. There's uh, 14 yep. exhibits, the you know pieces of discovery. They're only numbers. They're not any information of what they are, um, and they haven't got them, and they've been asked for previously. Correct. Let us know.